Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to this night-ending bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click the like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the in informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to this night ending bonus upload, shall we? All right, everybody. Today I have a subscriber who reached out to me. Um, I was kind of amazed because he is from my neck of the woods up in the Adirondacks. Uh, Jason, how are you today? Doing good. Thanks for um, reaching out to me. I appreciate it. And thanks for taking some time out of your weekend to share the encounter with us. Um, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. That way you can share your encounter with us. All right. Well, it was me and my mother and father. In the winter, we would go into where our counter was and bring our boat and camp and stuff with a snowmobile. And then in spring, we would go back in, but we'd have to walk in because, you know, we couldn't take ATVs with the state of New York. Right. <laughs> so we would go Labor Day weekend trout fishing. So we went in Friday night or Friday afternoon. Now, how, how, deep, a, how deep was it in there? Sorry. It's about six miles. Okay. A six mile height, which it sounds like a lot, but it's not too bad if you've done it your whole life. Right, right. Especially um, on a good day and stuff, you know, the scene. Yeah. And, yeah. And it was a cut, it's pretty much a cut trail till right at the end. So we went in and set everything up. Friday night was pretty uneventful, everything was real quiet. We didn't see no animals or nothing. Friday night, we fished, went to bed. Saturday, we got up. We fished all day like we usually do. Saturday evening, around 10 or 11 o'clock, we heard a doe belting, like a scream, doe crying, yep. like a yearling crying for its mother. And then you know how they, before they die, they, they almost sound like a baby crying. Yeah. And we heard that, but we didn't know where it was coming from. So we were on the edge a little bit, but we didn't really know. We went to bed. When we got up, me and my father just took a walk around the lake. We were going to go check one of our caches because my mother was cold that night. And we thought we had more blankets. So we walk around on the lake and we find the yearling that we heard the night before. And it was tore apart. Wow. And, and not chewed up, it was tore apart. Okay. Um, I mean, there wasn't nothing left of it. And I noticed my father got real uneasy after that. So not to cut you off again, but this is a place because you've got caches there. This is a place that you guys have gone for a long time. Like you guys go there. Oh yeah. 20 years. Okay. Then before I was born, my father went in there, been going in there for 40 years. Right. So this isn't new to you, new to your dad. Your dad knows this area. Yeah. Kinda like the back of his hand, like his backyard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he could walk in there blindfolded probably. All right. 
All right. Now the deer, <laughs> when you saw the deer, uh, I, I know you said it was tore up. What can you kind of describe the, like when you, like almost like it was shredded. Some of the hind quarter was eaten. The neck was eaten hmm. and it, it was tore up. Like, I don't know, almost like a, a Freddy Krueger movie, you know, like the claws. It just, right. it was tore up on the sides. Now, just so people know, you, you are, you grew up here, up in the Adirondacks. Um, we do have black bear up here, but black bear. They're, they don't eat meat, they, so. Thank you. Well, they do, but they don't go hunting deer, you know. Yeah, like they don't, they don't hunt deer, like, that's not their main source of food. Right, right. I mean, we had two coolers full mm -hmm. of trout. If, if it was that hungry, it it's not going to chase down that deer when it could just come take our coolers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we went back to the campsite. Then my father was on edge all the rest of the day into the night. And your dad's not a, he's, he's not. No, a, he's a man's man. He not much scared him. Okay. I mean, he's lived his whole life in the woods, so nothing in the woods scared him. And uh, it was late that evening, 11 or 12, we kept hearing something walking around by our campsite. And uh, I was in the tent by myself, and they were in another tent, and I could hear him talking a little. And then he come and got me up about 1 o'clock because we kept hearing something walking around the lake hmm. and where we stayed we were up on a ledge like 10 foot off the water so we're kind of overlooking the lake okay. you know what i mean yeah so he had his big spotlight and we heard something across the lake and we sh he shined his light over there and that's when we saw it which i i really don't know what it was it was on all fours to begin with and then when we shined the light, it looked at us, stood up, and walked towards us, you know, towards the edge of the lake, looking at us. Okay. It didn't have no tail. Right. It had legs like a dog, like you would see if you picked your dog up and held it up, you know. His legs were bent back like a, like a dog or a wolf. His abdomen was really really skinny his body really wasn't proportionate like it you would think mm -hmm. but his chest and head were big almost and, top heavy yeah like top heavy okay and uh you could even see like around his abdomen almost look like mange hmm. kind of okay you know what you could see with the light right right i mean you're you're how far how far it is, from where It's only you probably 100 yards across there. Yeah, okay. So you think 100 yards is a long ways, but it's not that far. Not really, no. No. So when you when you saw, you, you, what'd the head look like? Like, describe the head and face area if you could. Yeah, it was, his head was big, like kind of big and round, and the head, tall pointy ears but it really didn't have a big snout the snout was short okay i mean not not like a like a german shepherd snout or nothing like that it was it was kind of stubby like a hound dog stubby or yeah kind of like a, yeah kind of like a hound dog it didn't stick way out right and i didn't know that until mm -hmm. it turned a little bit and when it turned is when you could really see the snout and how top heavy it was now, when your dad got the light, was there any reflection on the eyes? Was there any sort of... Yeah, but they, I hear people say redness. Right. They, it, to me, they just reflected like a raccoon or a deer's eyes, almost like a yellowish. Okay. And I hear people say, well, yellow okay. glow. Well, it's going to glow when you hit it with a light. Right, right. I mean, because before, once he put the light down... His eyes didn't glow no more. So the light is what made his eyes stand out. Okay. Then my dad looked at me and my mother and he said, get what you can carry. We're leaving. Did the creature, when it looked at you, 
you guys did it make a noise did it do anything or was it silent no the it, time? it just it just looked at give us like a death stare hmm. okay and then as soon as it set his front legs back down to turn and walk that's what my dad said get what you can carry we're leaving we left everything the fish the coolers everything wow. and as we were walking out we could hear something walking behind us then to the side of us then behind us but it always kept its distance how far would you say uh, probably 50 60 feet away okay and it, it sounds close <laughs> but when it's pitch dark you know it's a long ways away yeah now when, and i think my dad was just too scared to shine a the light there again right is is what i really think so this creature was on the opposite side of this small lake 100 yards yeah. away but for it to get around back to your side would be a lot longer than 100 yards so this oh yeah he had good, to come all the way around yeah so it moved at a good pace to get to where yeah. you guys were if it was the same one right but good i talk, just, we assumed talk. it was the same animal yeah yeah so we get out to the parking and where we parked the truck it's a it's it's just like a pull off and we were we were backed in there and we jumped in the truck and we backed out towards the road and when the lights shine back in where the trail was you could see it standing there in the trees looking at us hmm. and my dad hunted and was in the woods his whole life and after that he never sat another day in the woods hunting ever right yeah, I mean, I think it <laughs> traumatized until he passed away. And, and you know, you said your dad worked out in the woods. Um, he he carried a firearm with him after that while he was working, yeah, correct? all the time. Yeah, he kept it with him all the time after that. You know, because before that, it really, he never did. Even... And if you're walking around in the woods and you're walking on the crust, it's all good. But if you drop down three or four foot in the snow, coyotes and stuff can still walk on the crust. Yeah. So that used to scare me to death, but it never bothered him one bit. Yeah. Yeah. But after you were, that. You were sharing, like, you know, you said one time that you, you'd you seen a bear track and he, he was like, let's follow this. And you're like, whoa, I don't really know. So well, he, that's when he saw a bear track, it was like a you know an animal finding blood yeah he yeah. loved bear hunting and you know they didn't scare him one bit but this creature just it scared him what was the what was the ride home like very quiet my mother kept at first kept saying you know what is that this that and he just kept telling her you know shut up it was just a bear right don't nobody need to know about this and we never went back in there we never went back and got our stuff he never went back there and fished till the day he died yeah i mean that that's the only person he talked about it with is me and he still i mean he was still confused yeah i think he just couldn't comprehend it what did he have any theories like when you guys would talk in the end like what uh, he'd really, at first he would say, well, it could have been a bear standing up, but then when you looked at the abdomen and stuff, right. it wasn't a bear and it, it didn't have a snout like a bear. You know, you know, a bear can walk on two legs for a little bit, but this just walked. I mean, it just, it walked up and looked at us and stood there. It wasn't like it walked up and had to go back down like a bear does. Right. And like, it never went back down mm -hmm. until it started to go away because it could probably move faster on four legs. Because mm -hmm. I, I think if it wanted to get us, it could have got us. Oh, easily to get around that lake. Like, like when you shared um, how it came up to the lake, like a bear... <clears throat> would walk on on its hind legs for a you know a couple feet and look more curious 
Yeah, not, no, not, this not didn't look curious. Stare, you know, this thing gave you a death stare. That's not a bear. Yeah, if, if looks could kill. Yeah. I mean, and I think it just didn't want us there. Is the whole thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's definitely. Now, how close? We won't have. We won't mention any towns. Um. But. What would be the closest uh, populated? How close was the closest populated area? Probably big populated area, probably 25 minutes. Okay. But like small town, probably 10 or 15. Okay. But you know, and I like upstate New York, it might be a little town here. Yeah. But then it's woods for 200 miles. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I know exactly where you're talking about, and it's it's very dense woods in that area yeah. as well. Um, it's crazy. So, well, I appreciate you um, letting me share my encounter. I appreciate you sharing it with me. Um, I I like you said I when you when you emailed me, you were like Adirondacks, and then I gave you a holler and. You're in a whole different state now. Um, you're down south, but you know it was. It's definitely neat to to talk to somebody that's from my area that actually had an encounter um, with something very similar to what I saw. Uh, just the way you explained how it moved and how odd it looked. You know, I mean, when you first told me this story, I was like blown away i mean you you could probably hear it in my voice because i was just like wait yeah. what you know so i appreciate you taking your time out of your day to share that with us uh it's really really means a lot so thank yeah. you that's no problem um do you have any kind of parting words for everybody and do me a favor don't hang up when we end the video or upload yeah. but do you have any parting words for everybody um just pay attention when you're in the woods and believe in this seeing. I mean, you can criticize people if you've never seen something. But, I mean, I wouldn't criticize people because one day you're going to be criticized. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's a, a statement that uh, got sent to me, an encounter got sent to me the other day. And the end of the statement was, um, you don't have to believe in these things for these things to kill you. And, and that really kind of stuck with me because you don't have to believe in them, but those of us who do know what's going to happen if you get caught by one. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't hunt no more. I have 120 years since that day. Yeah. Since then I, I don't hunt. Yeah. I try not to go in the woods. <laughs> and it's and you're far I mean, away you're far enough away so you obviously this thing messed you up that bad to where you know these things are everywhere in any kind of wooded area yeah i mean you don't never know yep. it was woods somewhat you know it was always it was woods there sometime so you never know what's around yeah absolutely all right jason well i appreciate you reaching out thank you very much don't hang up and have a good night all right Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. I hope you all enjoyed this night ending bonus, this night ending interview as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Thank you for supporting the channel. Your support is what keeps the channel growing and going. And honestly, what gives people a chance to share their experiences and theories, judgment and ridicule free, simply treated with the respect that we all deserve. Thank you. Everyone stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, friends, these creatures are real, they are out there, and they are dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers, and God bless.